This week on Supercars Talk, it's driver announcement after driver announcement, and Brody has nearly a perfect weekend at the bend. Where do we start on this weekend? Um, Macca's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles livery. How good was that? Uh, just absolutely amazing. I'm really torn now. Hopefully they uh, do some models of these special liveries for Macca during the year. Um, I'm not sure whether to get the uh, the gold version from um, Perth or uh, this this one. Uh, just abs absolutely stunning. Uh, here's hoping it will still be the same at Sandown and uh, I'm there and I get to see it in person. Uh, but the driver announcements are probably the actual big news. Uh, where do you start? Um, Stanaway at the Groves. Mm, yeah. Um, is this the best decision ever? Uh, time will tell. Of course, he will do awesome at Sandown and Bathurst in a Triple Eight car because it's pretty much the top of the field. Will he do so good at the Groves? Uh, he struggled in the fourth Tickford car. He struggled at uh, Gary Rogers Motorsport as well, not being in the best equipment. Will uh, we see history repeating itself here? Or will, you know, the, the Groves did have a bit of an uptake in fortunes over the weekend. Uh, yeah, probably some big takeaways from that. Uh, Dave Reynolds obviously out at the Groves. Could he be at Team 18? That's uh, what, the, what the smart money says right now. Um, but Al McVean looks like he will be staying at the Groves. He won't be shifting across wherever Dave Reynolds goes, uh, which he obviously came across from Erebus with Dave. Um, and a lot of pen right racing references in all of the literature about Dave leaving and also Richie coming in. Does that mean um, a lot of people have been saying that Penright is gone with Dave, uh, but I've also heard the opposite that Penright will be staying and they are definitely there. Dave Steele with Team 18 is not reliant on Penright coming across. Uh, yeah, so a lot there. Now, the LeBrock to Erebus news seems insignificant uh, after all of that, uh, but that is a big shift. Um, Jack obviously going back to Erebus. He started off there um, Enduro campaign back in like 2015 when they were running Mercs. I think I actually have the model up uh, at the top here somewhere. Maybe I should get that one out. Um, yeah, great move for Jack. Uh, big question then is who fills his shoes at MSR? Um, obviously, Richie's off the uh, off the list now. Uh, could it be Percat who will be leaving WAU? That has been confirmed. No surprises there. Get into that in a second. Um, obviously, Jaden Ojeda is there looking for a seat. Uh, he's, he's an enduro co-driver. Um, Jalen Robotham as well. Uh, could he be in the frame for that seat? Then you've got the question mark of the three into two at Tickford doesn't fit. Uh, so any of those three guys in the uh, frame there at MSR, um, they're probably in a good position now because they're, they're probably the uh, top team with a seat to fill. Warrenshaw, Andretti United. Um, it looks like uh, Fabian Coulthard is out of the running. I'm not sure. I saw a headline, didn't read missed the article somewhere, but I think it, Fab says he's not interested in a full-time ride next year. So that means they've signed Ryan Wood for the seat. Uh, yeah, I don't think it was your choice, Fabs. Um, then the other news kind of swirling around is that potentially there is someone uh, looking to buy those two Tickford licenses that supercars were going to buy to bring the field back to 24. Um, but we could actually be looking at 26 cars again next year because Blanchards aren't down the route of buying a license and then someone as I don't know who, but apparently someone, Peter Adderton, um, Someone has come along and said that they want to buy the two Tickford ones that are, you know, currently kind of for sale. But <laughs> that's all of the news and movement. Um, and we also had Scott Pye driving the safety car on the weekend. I thought, I th actually, I only saw the photo first. Um, I think it was on Instabook or one of those things out there. Um, and at first glance, I thought, oh, wow, the safety car's already gone to a Camaro Ford's pullout has happened immediately. Uh, and then I had a bit of a closer look and went, no, no, that's a race car. Um, yeah, 
I thought maybe a um, bit of guerrilla marketing there, you know, get it on the TV while there's Shell logos kind of everywhere at the bend, but the Shell logos didn't turn up at the bend. It was still OTR kind of everywhere. So um, yeah, with the, the bend changing its name during the week, uh, yeah, I expected a lot of Shell branded signage there with BP obviously being a sponsor of Supercars. Probably wanted to get their name out there, but then the Team 18 cars weren't on the telecast. So that did not work. Now, after all of that news, it is time to review the racing on the weekend. I will try and make this short and sharp so the video isn't too long. Uh, kicking it off once again with Blanchards, who are currently last in the championship. And uh, the results over the weekend, 12th, 16th and 16th. Uh, They've got two cars to worry about at Sandown and Bathurst. Grove Racing. Uh, these guys were actually back in the mix on the weekend, uh, fighting kind of around the top 10. Uh, Matt Payne was actually the stronger of the two drivers, well, the stronger looking of the two drivers. Seems the guys in the uh, the contract negotiations had a bit of a, a struggling weekend. Uh, Payne got himself in the top 10 twice um, and was in the top 10 in each of the qualifying sessions. Uh, highlight there, third on the grid in race two. Um, Reynolds just missed out on the podium in that race too. Uh, Chaz got him on the last lap of the race for that bottom step of the podium. Um, and the, he was going pretty reasonable in race three until that contact with Feeney, which I'm still a little bit questionable about because they're saying Reynolds got the penalty because he locked his rear brakes, uh, but he was alongside Feeney and Feeney kind of turned in hard. So Dave's saying, well, I had to jam on the brakes because he, you know, turned in hard on me. Um, and that's why I jammed on the brakes, which locked the brakes and why we made contact. Uh, just a little bit of a strange one, that one. And the, the penalty was instant because that was the second last lap. Uh, Dave had the penalty before the last lap was finished. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if they jumped the gun a little bit on that one uh, where they probably could have left it. Uh, same, same could be said about a penalty in Sydney that maybe they jumped the gun on that one pretty quickly and then it's, it's a bit hard to wind it back after, you know, um, obviously you haven't served the penalty in race, but yeah, you've, you've given it straight away. Maybe on these, you know, last lap, second last lap kind of incidents that are a bit on the on the borderline. Should we be jumping at them? The Groves could be right in the mix when it comes to Sandown. Well, whichever car Garth Tander gets his hands on. And now I'm a little bit questioning whether he'd be better off with Dave or whether he'd be off with uh, Payne. Because Payne is obviously the future of the team and Garth is there for longer. Maybe put the two long-term drivers together. Just saying, um, but yeah, I, I'd be uh, looking fairly confident with their turn of speed after the weekend and Garth Tander coming into that team. At Stone Racing, I was predicting big things from these guys this weekend and uh, yeah, they went missing a bit. Um, Jack LeBrock got himself just into the top 10 in uh, the final race there. Hill was, uh, yeah, he got himself involved in that lap one carnage on Saturday and uh, yeah, the car had to be rebuilt. Uh, and then Jack got himself into a bit of strife on uh, Sunday morning there when he uh, did the, the old dive bomb on the lap one on uh, Cam Waters, which in turn, uh, they he spun, Cam Waters spun, and Will Davison spun. So it was a trifecta, had a long stop to uh, fix some damage to the car and ended up kind of nowhere. Uh, it was just, just a, a bit of an ordinary, it was a bit more of a Matt Stone Racing 2022 kind of weekend rather than a Matt Stone Racing 2023 weekend that we've got used to. Premi Air, speaking of going missing, uh, Golding was 14th in race one. I don't really recall seeing them on the telecast. That's how much they went missing this weekend. Team 18, uh, all the hype about Pi driving the safety car before the round. Um, he was 11th in the final race. They dropped from fifth to seventh in the team's championship after this weekend. Dick Johnson Racing, uh, finally. Finally, finally, finally. Uh, they weren't the fastest Mustangs on the weekend, but they were in that top 10 fight all weekend. Um, Highlight or low light of the weekend, uh, that three-part qualifying on Saturday, where in uh, Q2, they were first and third fastest after the first run. They decided to save a set of tyres for the second, uh, for Q3. 
Fortunately, everyone else went faster on their second run and they, I think it was like 13th and 15th, they ended up on the grid. Uh, so that, that was, uh, yeah, a little bit of a, but good to see them, you know, solidly both cars having pace all weekend in the top 10. I think that's the first time we've seen that kind of performance from them all year. Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. If fast starts won your championships, call these guys Max Verstappen. Um, even Percat was getting in on it. Uh, that um, qualified fourth for race two, I think it was, race three, uh, and then got that awesome start in, into second position, was running second at the start of the race, ultimately finished fourth, just kind of missing out on the podium. Percat. Well, um, I, I just hope this is a turning point for him, not some flash in the pan thing. And although he is out at the end of the year, I would like to see him finish off strong. Um, obviously, I have a bit of a soft spot for him. Um, I would like to see him finish off the year strong and get kind of a good co-drive for next year rather than him just kind of drift off into obscurity. Um, obviously, things haven't gone right at Walking Shores over the last couple of years, but I... I think probably his results and that over the years probably des deserve a bit better than, you know, seeing him go out like this. Um, Chad, Ch Chaz, <laughs> double, double podiums for Chaz uh, in race one and two. Then race three, he did a per cat job in qualifying, but he did race himself back, I think from 18th to 9th in that race, typical. Um, yeah, ju just a... a a solid weekend from them. This is what we were more expecting when Percat came in, that they would have two cars in the fight all weekends. Tickford Racing. Tom S. Randall. Ah, uh, yeah. Finally came of age after qualifying on the front row here last year and then botching that start. He just, um, yeah. Anyway, this weekend wasn't off the podium all weekend. Saturday, that was his first solo round podium, and then, yeah, stayed on the podium all weekend. Uh, highlight of the weekend for them was having Cam Waters join him on the podium in race three. Cam was in the fight all weekend as well. Even James Courtney found himself in the top 10 twice with two eighth positions and had a worse result of 11th. Just a really strong weekend from the two, three Tickford cars. Brad Jones Racing. Considering these guys are third in the team's championship, I was expecting a lot more from them this weekend. Uh, Jaime was a top scorer with a 10th, 10th and a 12th in the races. Fullwood got an 8th in the second race, but all of the other results, even from the other two cars as well, were down kind of in the very low teens or in the 20s somewhere. Uh, yeah, they, they just went what, a, a bit missing as well. Triple Eight. Shane Van Gisbergen seems to be going for the record of how many steering racks can you go through in a weekend. <sighs> a little bit strange, that one. Um, mm. um, coupled with him getting released with the wheel nut still being done up on the car, $1,500 and 30 teams championship points. Thank you very much for that one. Um, yeah, Feeney also, he got himself involved in the Dave Reynolds incident. Um, it, they didn't, they weren't on the podium all weekend. Just, yeah, a, a very un Eight like weekend. Uh, I, I'd, I'd have to look through the books. It's, it's probably happened before, but it is very unlike them not to be at least on the podium at some point over the weekend. Erebus, um, one criticism for Brody over the weekend he didn't get pole for every race. He was second on the grid in the second race. Um, yeah, his teammate that was in the news all week, though, Will Brown, uh, he wasn't a shocker, but he did drop from second to fourth in the uh, the Drivers' Championship there. Um, he got himself, uh, after an ordinary qualifying for the Saturday race, he got himself involved in that first lap incident. It was not his fault, but when you qualify in kind of the mid-pack, you do open yourself up to things like this. So, yeah, um, his results were D and F in that first race, and then 13th and 13th. It's uh, not the kind of uh, championship drives uh, this weekend. Yeah, it's it'll be, he's uh, he's now on the back foot, I think. Um, yeah, the, he has got the endurance races, things could turn around very quickly, but uh, yeah, um, it, it, 
it, it just it's slipped a little bit this weekend from him. Um, Brody just an absolutely outstanding weekend. He was extremely fast. He seemed to have the races under control. There was even that call over the radio. Um, if you don't pass this lap, you're going to have to pit. So he just went and passed. I think it was on waters. He just went and did it. Um, it's like he had, um, it was a Shane Van Gisbergen kind of weekend. He just seemed to be in control, you know, just, okay, I'm going to go and win the race now. And off he went and won it. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the pressure now falls on David Russell. The guy who seemingly came from nowhere a couple of years ago is now in the best car in the Enduros with the driver who's on form. Um, yeah, kind of a, a lot of pressure falls on him because he's got to take on, you know, the wing cups and the tanders and that, uh, you know, with the championship pressure on him. So that's my review from the bend on the weekend. Were you as excited about Macaulay Jones' livery as what I was? I know it was down the back of the field, but it was even with the helmet and all that. Yeah, just a, a really cool job doing something different there from those guys. Um, yeah, what, what do you think of the driver movements? And uh, yeah, who are you expecting to take that Matt Stone racing seat, which is probably the hottest seat on the market right now? Uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments. Until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.